the garden. Today I'm going to be carving this pumpkin, mostly for the seeds. I learned this year that they're really high in phosphorus. So if you're not going to eat them, I would recommend that you compost them. I'm going to carve in at a steep angle. So a nice steep angle like this will give us a solid cap. Last year I actually baked inside of a pumpkin, which was a lot of fun. The cap did end up falling in because it shrunk as it cooked. And the cake was so moist, I think it was basically steamed inside the pumpkin. We'll just cut off some of that material here. There's actually not too many seeds in here, so I want to make sure I get them all. My favorite tool for removing the seeds is a really nice, strong metal spoon. Something with a nice edge like this, and that'll really carve into that pumpkin and scrape away all those delicious seeds. Look at that. I'll try and avoid any big chunks like this, but I don't actually rinse these. I like to keep all that orange goo on there. That provides a little extra flavor as they roast. And these big orange pumpkins that are great for jack-o'-lanterns are actually really poor for eating. But the seeds are just excellent. If you're going to actually roast the pumpkin itself, I think you need like a sugar pumpkin. Whereas this one's grown for its size and its beautiful color, there are many pumpkins that are grown for their flavor. Pumpkin seeds are actually encased in a tough leathery skin. I recommend you roast them just with the skin on. Actually getting to the true seed is really difficult. There is a really tough leathery skin, kind of like a sunflower seed. They're still edible, but they are really fibrous. So this is the true pumpkin seed in the middle. And usually the commercially sold pumpkin seeds are all shelled. Now I have no idea how they do that, and I'm not going to bother with that. As I mentioned earlier, we're not going to actually rinse these, we're going to keep all that pumpkin goo on there. That's actually really flavorful. So I'm really simply just going to add some salt and a little bit of olive oil. So I'll toss these together and then space them out on a baking sheet, one layer thin. While our seeds are roasting, I think I will carve up a little jack-o'-lantern. I'm not going to do a face, I'm going to try and trace a leaf. So I grab some maple leaves, I think that one would be really nice. Uh, that one might be a little big, so I think this is a good size. I'll just get rid of that stem just for convenience. Start with a fine point. Just try and get it as close to the real thing as possible. But there's half of our leaf. So if we just mirror that, then I think we'll be good. And then we'll just finish off with some of those. So that's a pretty nice shape. So let's see if we can carve that at all. That's the real question. Is can we make it look nice? If you're gonna overcut, you always wanna do it inside your shape. And if you can, you want to try and angle your cuts in so that it's widest on the interior, similar to a castle window. That just allows more light to penetrate through. Now, I'm losing my sun, so I'll try and speed this up, and then we'll see if we can illuminate it. These have been cooking for 15 minutes at 350, and I think they're done. If we take a look, they're turning a sort of a golden brown. Once these cool down a little bit more and just sort of dry out, we can do a taste test. We might want to add a little bit more salt or some seasoning, Cajun spice or even pumpkin spice. 
and they make for a really healthy, really tasty snack. These turned out great. They remind me of popcorn. They're just that perfect little crunchy, salty snack. And the little bits of caramelized pumpkin are the best part. So I hope you give this a grow in your garden, roasting your very own pumpkin seeds. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.